So this video is a basic tutorial on how to use Figma. It follows one that I saw at uh, designlab.com. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a little mobile app and it's going to have three different screens. We're going to call those frames. And don't judge me on the layout. I'm just trying to show the basics. You can go and make things look pretty. So we'll have our first screen that has an image and text and some inputs and a button. And then we have an icon for Wi-Fi and for the battery, the, the signal strength. And then we have another frame, which is just uh, a colorized filled frame with some uh, generated text and sort of a little grid of some icons and another button. And then we have another frame with a button and uh, uh, an image. And what happens is when you click on the login button, we'll navigate to this screen. When you click on this image, we navigate to this screen. When you click on this image, then we uh, navigate to an URL. And if you click back here, it goes to this one, back goes to here. So we're going to learn how to do navigation and buttons and some different frames. So that's what we're going to work on in this short tutorial. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to figma.com. And if you haven't already logged in, it will prompt you to log in. And uh, it will bring you to your dashboard that shows you all the different projects you've been working on. If there's things you don't want to show up, you can just right mouse click on them, remove from recent. We can do the same thing here. Or you could actually delete projects. If there's one you don't want to work with, you just right mouse click delete. Or you can right mouse click and rename or make copies. But this is your dashboard. And so what you're going to want to do is create what we call a design file. And up here at the top, we can create a brand new design file or bring in what we call a fig jam file and this is actually just sort of a whiteboard area that allows you to collaborate with other team members and brainstorm and draw things out or you can bring in files that are already created uh, we're going to go ahead and create a brand new design file so click on new design file this takes you to your canvas area so this is what we're doing, we've already made the assumption you, you made your Figma account, you logged in, we saw our dashboard. When we clicked on this new design file, this opened up our Figma work area along with our menu. And there's our main menu and our tools that we have to work with. And they have different objects that we can use. It's going to allow us to create our website or our application and, and work with options and layers. We're going to understand that a little bit later. We have our canvas area. Here's our layers area, our canvas area. And we also have our design. So as you drop items here, you'll see information about each item. The prototype, which allows you to create navigation. And the inspect, which allows you to go and generate code uh, HTML code or iOS code or Android code for the different things that you're creating. This is our play button, which allows us to go and present what we've created. This allows us to share with other people. So let's go ahead and start working with our new mobile application we want to create. Most of the work we're going to do is going to be contained in what we call a frame. And a frame just acts as an actual container. It holds different elements that you're going to use to make your application. So when you click on frame, we could go and drag and drop the boundaries for a frame here. Or better yet, we could actually choose the type of app that we're creating. And usually the idea is you want to choose one of the smallest types of apps because it will automatically change aspect ratio if it was for a different application that was bigger. So the inspector over here, our design area within the inspector frame, is showing the preset formats that you have. And when you choose a frame size for your design, you want to make sure that you also use the same device for your prototype. 
one recommendation is to choose the device with a smaller screen size since it's more likely that everything will scale properly to a larger mobile screen size than the other way around. In this video though, we're just gonna work with the iPhone 8. So you click on that and the frame is automatically created for you. After you create the frame, the inspector is gonna show you the attributes for that frame. And notice I have this toolbar you can drag and move that anywhere you want to get it out of the way. I'll just pull it over here. But look at the attributes or the description for this frame. It shows you the XY coordinate on the canvas, the width, the height. Do you want uh, straight edge corners? Do you want rounded corners? You can do an auto layout. You can do grids. You can specify the fill, the color of the background, and other things for this frame that describe how it looks. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and just change the name of this frame. If you notice, you see the name right there. But what we can do is come over to our layers window and you'll see all the elements you're gonna be working with. Right mouse click on the element and choose rename. And let's give it a name, we'll just call it Login. This is going to be our login frame and it changes the name for that element on our canvas. We can use our control key and our mouse wheel to scroll in and to scroll out if you want to make something larger or smaller. We can also press and hold the space bar, which will turn our pointer into a hand and that allows us to drag things around and then let go of the space bar, and then we'll go back to the mouse pointer. Let's go ahead and click the text tool, and let's drop a box by pressing and holding my left mouse button. We'll drop that on the form. So now we have another element. Did you notice the element showed up over here under layers? and it's now below the frame, meaning the frame is acting as a container to hold this text. As you look at your text element, you can see in the design window the attributes for that item that you've just created. And so with that, we could come over here and change the font size. We could say, well, we want it to be maybe 20, font size or 32 font size, whatever you want to do. We'll go ahead and make it 32 and then let's type in user name and we'll just put a colon. And let's go ahead and drop a rectangle on this frame and we'll put it right below username like that. With the username, as we move it around, when you see the red line show up, that means that you're centered. So that is centered on the frame. That's centered over the box. Let's go ahead and center the box. There's center of the box. But this makes it a little difficult because we're thinking, wait, that doesn't really look centered. And in fact, it just feels like we need to do something to make that uh, centered within that box. So you can come over here to the design area. You could do a line horizontal or a line top. One thing we can do is grab both of those items. I lassoed them by pressing and holding the left mouse button. And we can choose a line horizontal centers. That will center it like that. We could choose this one and say we want it centered. Or we could say we want it uh, a line vertical different ways that you can center that. The other thing you might want to do is grab all of this text by double clicking on it. And if you come over to your design window, you could say, let's align that text in that box. So now we have centered within the centered. I can grab all that, align horizontal center just to make sure it looks good. The other thing you might want to do which is strongly recommended is as you drop these different 
elements on your canvas. Some of them are descriptive and some are not. For instance, username, that's descriptive. Rectangle one, not descriptive. So what if you right mouse click and do a rename and we could say uh, something like input user name so that we know what that box really represents. Now we could put spaces if you want, it's up to you. You have to decide what your own naming conventions are. Let's do that again. Let's drop another text. We'll put that there and the font is still 32. It's still centered. And let's type in the word password. And then let's bring another box below it. And we can grab everything and choose a line. Now we know that everything is centered on that screen. I like my input boxes to look like they're real boxes. And maybe we want them to be the same size. If you notice, this width is 244, 67. This one is 240, 256. You could grab both by clicking and holding your shift key down to grab them. And maybe you could come over and say, we want those both to be 240 by 60. And now you can change the height and width of multiple items at one time. And once again, I did that by clicking on one and then holding the shift key down to grab the other one. And then you can see common attributes that you can change. This doesn't really look like a box to me and I like, to, like it to look like a box. So we could go to the stroke area and we could say that we want it to really have a box on the outside. Now that looks more like a box. I could do that for the other one. And remember, I could have done them both by holding my shift key down, grabbing both. So now we have an outside box on both of those. Let's add a button. Now we don't really have buttons, but a button is made up of text and a rectangle. So let's add a text. We'll drop it right there. We'll type in the word login and it's already centered within that box which we like we could also if you wanted to change the color of that font and uh, we could come to the fill area and say we want that fill to be blue so now we have blue text you can choose any of those colors the gradients and that was by clicking on fill let's go ahead and add a rectangle let's put that rectangle over the word login. If you notice, we've now hidden the word login. We can't see it. And that's because the way the elements are added to the frame is in a hierarchical order, meaning last one added is brought to the front. So if we want the text to be above the rectangle, you can either drag and let it go or we could have right mouse clicked on that box and you could choose send a back and that brings the login button up front. Sort of looks like a button. We can straighten it a little bit. In fact, we could grab that and do an align horizontal also. We can click on this frame and look at the attributes and say we want it to have a rounded corner. And we'll just go with the number five and let's see how it looks. And now it looks like it has rounded corners. Another thing we could do is we could add effects. We could say, let's do a shadow. That's a drop shadow. And if you notice, now it looks like it has a little shadow. So it looks sort of 3D-ish. So these are all the different things you can do working with the design aspect and changing the attributes, which say, how do we want it to look? So remember with the send to back and bring to front, you can either modify the order in your layers. Windows, you right mouse click. And on Mac, I think it's a control click. And then that allows you to get to your range area. Sometimes there are elements you want to reuse over and over. And you really don't want to have to go and recreate them. 
So what we could do is we could grab this button by lassoing it and then come up to this icon which talks about components and we could create our own component. We've now said that the combination of these items makes this a component and you can rename your component and we could call it a login button. And so now if we ever needed another login button somewhere, that's already made. So you just have to use the login button rather than worrying about a rectangle along with a label or a text. Remember you should go and probably change the names by right mouse clicking, rename, this will be input, password, and any other things that don't look descriptive. That's just the right thing to do. Let's go ahead and add an image for this page. Now, we don't really have images per se. When we click on our shape tools, it says an image or a video, but there's something that's a little bit easier than doing that. And so what you wanna do is open up Explorer or your Finder window. In Windows, I open up my Explorer and you just go find different files, image files, that you want to work with. Figma supports uh, PNGs, JPEGs, HEICs, GIFs, uh, Web BPs, and MP4 video formats. So let's say I just wanted to grab this item. And what I can do is I can drag it into Figma and it will automatically drag that image. Now, the one thing that you do have to worry about is what if it's too big? Well, you could just resize it by dragging and dropping, or you could change the width and the height here. You could change the XY coordinates, meaning where does it show up? We could say the X is 50. Or we can highlight the image and just say align it vertically. Now, the one thing it's cut off, right? So we know we can either just make it bigger or allow Figma to help you. If you double click on the image, it brings up an image editing tool. And we can now say, well, we want it to be tiled or we want it to be cropped. We can go and choose how we want to crop it. We were at fill or we could say, let's fit it. And it will fit the image within the boundary we have. Other things we can do with this tool is we have the ability to rotate it, change the exposure, the contrast, saturation, temperature. These are photo editing attributes for images. So you don't really have to get another tool to do the editing of your images. You can just double click on the image and that will allow you to work with the different attributes for a picture. Figma does its best to try to give you all the tools you need to help you do your job. Pre-built tools are called plugins. And we can go and look at the different plugins that we have. And we also have our resources, which are different components we made. There's our login button we made. Plugins, which are pre-built uh, applications that you can use. Sometimes you have to pay for them. Sometimes they're free. And we have widgets, which are also things we can download and use that people have written. Figma really tries to help you get your job done. And you can go look for different plugins. We could say we want a plugin, plugin called Lauren. And it's the lorem ipsum, and we could bring that one in and run it. We'll see that in just a little bit. If you want to go and look at the different plugins, I'm going to provide a couple of links that you could look at. Here's the first one. And it's 20 Figma plugins every designer must have. It's a couple years old, but um, they have a pretty good list of what might help you get your job done without you having to do more work. Let's use the work that other people have already done. Another good link is this one. 
And the Figma website actually allows you to go and search for plugins on theirs based upon different things that are available to you. And they break it down by categories. So take a look at the plugins because you want to use those to save time in creating what you want to do. Let's go ahead and bring in a plugin. And let's search for Fontisto. And then we'll click on that. And you click Run. And it brings in different icons you can work with. And so we can now drag or, or click. It says that it's added it here. And um, we don't really know where that is. We can't see it. So if you can't see it, come to your XY coordinates and change them. And then you have the ability to see where they're at. And we can drag and move them. We can also change the size of these by dragging and dropping. Or if you wanted to, you can change it in your design mode. So that is, we'll look at that one. We're pretending like that's our strength of Wi-Fi. I double clicked. That's another way you can add. Drag it here. Let's resize it. And we can put it right there. And so we're using icons that are already built for us because we don't want to do the work. When you're done, you can close the plug-in window. And we have two there. I'll get rid of that other one just by highlighting and deleting. So now we have two different icons on our frame. If you notice, everything is being saved automatically. I could save a local copy. Currently, it's being saved to the cloud automatically for you. Sometimes it's wise to save a local copy and have a backup on your own machine. The name of our application so far is called Untitled. If you have anything selected, that shows you the element attributes in the design window. And if you notice, we see tools that we can work with. If you press the Escape key, nothing is selected. Now we can see we have a title for this application we're working with. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We can call it My First Figma. So that's more descriptive of what you're working with. Let's go ahead and create another new frame. Now remember, when you click on frame, it brings up a preset size if you want to use that. And a preset size for a bunch of different things, whether it's a desktop app, a tablet, things like that. We're going to go ahead and work with a phone. See if I minimize that, we'll see. And we're going to use the iPhone 8 again. Automatically brings in a new frame. And let's go ahead and rename that frame. And there's our login frame. Let's go ahead and rename this one to be our logos. We'll just call it logos. So we have another frame. And let's change the color of this frame. By clicking on the frame, going to the design window, we can see the fill. And we could say we want it to be blue. Choose the blue we want. And you can even change the percentage of that type of blue. It's up to you, whatever you'd like to see. Or easier than that, leave that 100, and you can just choose the different colors through uh, the color palette. So we'll go ahead and go with that color. Currently, this is one frame, but we could go to our layout grid and we could search for different grids that are already there. Or we could go ahead and just say we want that grid to be a 10 pixel grid. We can change the size. Uh, 20 pixel grid and this allows us to drop elements on the grid and it snaps to it in other words it helps line things up we don't have to use a grid if you don't want to use a grid you could also specify columns five columns or maybe we want three columns and this is another way of helping us to line items up 
or we could do it by rows. You can specify a gutter. Let's go back to columns and specify the gutter is 20. If you make the gutter 5, watch what happens. So it pulls the columns closer together. Or click on this little dash and it removes the columns altogether. So you might want to use columns to help you line things up. Up to you. Gutters specifies the padding in between the columns and another one was called stretch and that allows you to adapt to the size of the frame. Let's go ahead and drop a rectangle on this frame. Put a rectangle right there. And remember it's always wise to give names over here. I won't worry about doing that, but when you do your project, give names because it makes things more descriptive. Let's go ahead and open up a plugin. And this plugin is going to be called Lore. We'll click on Lore. And now we want to run the plugin. And it says Select or Draw Text Layer. So I'm going to click on Text. And I'm going to draw a text layer right here. And it says, well, how much text do you want in there? Do you want sentences, words, or paragraphs? We could say two words, add. And then it automatically will generate text for you. That's a nice little plugin because it makes it to where you don't have to type in dummy data just so people see things. Let's make a grid of images, and I'm going to supply these images for you. I'll put them in Slack. And once again, remember the easiest way to drop images is just to drag and drop. So we'll just start dragging images. And that's pretty big. Let's go ahead. We'll resize that image. And once again, remember if you want it to fit a certain way, we could say fit to the size that we have. And we can see that size is a 74 by 47. We could change it to be any size, 50 by 50. Automatically changes that size. Let's drop another one. Let's change its size to 50 by 50. And we could right mouse click, or double click, sorry, and choose a fit. And we'll just keep dropping these images that we have. In fact, let's just drop all the images that I have. Different schools in Utah. And I'm going to use my shift key, grab all of them, change their width to be 50 and 50. and double click we'll do a fit on all of them and then we can go ahead and line them up however we want to line them up so we have some different logos I want to have another button, but I don't really want the login button on this page. So if I just went ahead and dropped a rectangle here, and then I put text inside of it, we'll say that text is the word back, and I could center those. Uh, we'll take that, make sure that we center there. Let's do a Align vertical centers also. And there we go. We've now aligned both. This is our back button. Let's make the edges rounded again. So I click on a button, frame, I go to rounding. We could do eight this time if we want. So eight. I set the opacity. 
which if you ever make a mistake, just control Z until you get back to where you wanted to be. So back to here, we'll click on that one and change the rounded to eight again. There's our rounded button. We could drop a shadow. And remember, if we're gonna use this in more than one frame or over and over in one frame, you could highlight the item, click on components, create component, right mouse click and give it a name. We'll just call it BTN back, or we could call it back button. You come up with the standard you want to use. Some people like to put a little BTN in the word. Others will just specify the name and the word button. So we have another frame. Let's go ahead and make another frame. Frame, and we'll choose the iPhone 8 again. Automatically brings it in. Let's give it a name. We'll rename that, and let's call it a single logo. And we're going to copy this logo, and we can just paste it into here. We can resize that, make it any size we want. We can center it in the frame, and we can add interactions with all of these different elements, meaning when you, when you do something with an element, you can say, hey, what do we want to do if they do something? They're called interactions. So the way we do that, is you click on the element, go to your prototype, and click on plus sign for interaction. It now says, if you ever tap this element, we don't do anything. But we could say, if you tap it, or if you drag it, or if your mouse is hovering over it, or if you press on that, or if you press a specific key, in fact, if you click the key gamepad, you can choose what key you're pressing. Or did the mouse enter this element, or is it leaving the element? Did you touch down on it, or did you let the, the mouse button up on it? We could say, if we ever tap this, we want to go somewhere or open a link. Let's do this. Let's click open a link, and then you can specify where do you want to go. So what I usually do is I'll come up here and I'll type in the link I go to, copy it just to make sure it works, come back to Figma, paste that link in. Preserve scroll position means if you ever jump to another frame, when you come back, you'll be at that spot. But those are the ways you can interact with a specific element. And you can say, how do you interact? And what do you want to do? We've now said, if you ever click on this, we're going to go to that link. Remember, we made a component for back. I can copy that, and I can paste it. Now, when I pasted it, it looked like it just went back to here, which it did, which is fine. Or I could drag and drop to this form. But it automatically brings that component in, so I don't have to redo it. So as you can see, Making components where you have a combination of elements that if you're going to do something over and over and over, you might as well make a component out of it because that will save you time in the long run. Other things you could do is you could have uh, a video. However, doing certain videos, you can do MP4 files, but sometimes the tools you use to make those videos will require a payment, like FreeMake allows you to extract YouTube videos, but you have to pay for that. But there's a bunch of different tools out there you can use to work with videos and bring in MP4 into these different frames. All right, all the frames have a name. We have the different items. We could go and change all these names. You understand it makes it more readable. Now that we have everything built, what we want to do is we want to navigate. So the way you navigate is you make sure you're in the prototype area. And then you can click on different elements. And as you put your cursor on those elements, you notice you have a little circle with a plus sign. And they show up at different areas, and it doesn't matter. You could choose any of them. But we could say for this login button, I press and hold down the left mouse button, and I drag it to where I want it to go next. So when I let go, this means. When I tap, 
this button, I'm going to navigate to this frame. And you can actually go and specify the frame by clicking on the boxes, or you can choose how you want to navigate. But I just sort of like to use the drag and drop. The other thing you could do is you can say, well, do you want it to just automatically show the screen? Or do you want it to have like fading or moving in, moving out? This makes it cute, but sometimes gimmicky isn't really that good. Instant usually is the standard. We could do the same thing for this button. That if you ever click this button, we want to go back to the home page. And if we ever click this button, if you notice, it's saying, oh, it's a component. I'm going to go ahead and copy the same thing. We could say, no, I don't want you to go to login. I want you to go to logos. So this is a way you can break that chain of components you're already using. But to do all this, you have to be in the prototype. And then you can just start clicking on the elements and dragging and dropping. We could say, if they ever click on this icon, we're going to go to this frame. So now you can see the navigation that we have in place. All right, with everything now in place, we want to test things out. So click on the play button right here. Now, when it plays, here's our first screen. Remember, if I click on login, the next screen comes up. If I click back, it goes to home. If I click on the Y, brings up this screen. Back goes to here. If I click on the Y, we navigate to a web page. And when we come back, we left off where we had first clicked. So that's how you can view whether or not your navigation is working. When you're done, you can just close this. You could share the prototype. And this allows you to send it to somebody. Specify their emails. If you have more than one, you're going to uh, separate each email with a comma. And you can specify, do they have the ability to edit, or do they only look at it? Other things you can do is you could just say, you want to copy the link. Take this link, copy it. And now you could go and email that to everybody just in your email program. So this is a way with your prototype you can share with other people. When you're done with the prototype, just close that window and you come back to the Canvas area. The last thing that you can do, click on Inspect. Inspect allows you to see the different things that are happening for these layouts. For instance, we can look at the CSS code for the different frames. We could look at the iOS code. We could look at the Android code. And this is something that helps developers. We could either see it in table format or in actual written format. And we can do that for each of the different icons or elements that we're working with in Figma. This is great because this helps developers get a head start on trying to duplicate that within their code. And we've already talked about the share, which we saw in the prototype, but we could also share the project rather than just the prototype. So those are the basics of Figma. It should be enough to get you going. Take a look at all the different tools and play with them and uh, just have fun with it.